Before I get started, um, first of all, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and happy holidays. But before I get started, I'd like to show you a little bit about the W. How about that? Yeah. You guys, it's truly my honor to be here today to represent the WNBA. As I mentioned earlier, my name's Renee Brown. I'm Chief of Basketball Operations and Player Relations for the WNBA. And I have to admit, I think I have the best job in America. I first like to thank Janice and also Phyllis for this invitation. Um, Phyllis sent me a very passionate email about um, um, uh, this whole night tonight and I rose my hand right away I'm like I'm there just like I think he mentioned earlier I live in New York I jumped on a train I'm so excited about coming down here to have an opportunity to speak to each and every one of you because when I look out in the crowd I see myself when I was 15 16 17 and 18 and I have to tell you the information that Phyllis gave you I wish back then I knew that information you know, because it's better if, you're, if you come and you have that knowledge and you empower yourself through knowledge, there's a lot more things that you can do. So, Phyllis, what you gave them I thought was just wonderful. You know, I look back and, and a lot of people think, oh, Renee works for the WNBA. I'm going to tell you just a quick journey of how I got to the WNBA. I'm not telling you this to pat myself on the back because I don't need to. Because the WNBA is what I do. It's not who I am. I remember wanting to quit school and quit school and quit, quit school because no one went. But my mother saw something that I did not see. So for all of you young girls out there, if your mother and father are on you, thank them. Thank them. Thank them. Thank them for the things, how they're grounding you because they're going to go a lot further than anything that you can get is the, edu is, is the love that they're giving you. So remember that. I go from, from high school on to college. I was very fortunate to get my degree. I'm playing at UNLV, okay? And I thought I was the stuff. Could not play a lick. Horrible. I'll admit it to this day. Couldn't play. After my sophomore year, I realized, you know what? These girls are just bigger, faster, stronger than me. What can I do? Because I loved basketball. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get me a degree, become a teacher. I taught, I taught junior high school first, and then I taught about five or six years in high school. So I love the fact that you guys are here because I got my career started through high school, went on from high school, and went to a university called Stanford University. Anybody ever hear of that campus? I went there. I also coached at um, San Jose State. Anybody ever heard of that school? University of Kansas. These are schools that I had an opportunity to coach at. While at Stanford, and if you know anything about Stanford, if you know anything about them, first, they are an academic institution. First, basketball is second. You go to school to get a degree. Coach was talking about that earlier. If you have an opportunity to get any scholarship money, any scholarship money, I don't care if it's at division one, two, or three, the number one priority should be for you, for you to get your education. The councilman said it earlier. The average um, years in the WNBA, guess, how many do you think they play? What's the average player play in the WNBA? 10, 6, anybody else? It's like four. Four years, that's all they play. There are over 100 million women playing basketball in the world. How many did I just say? How many women? 100 million. There are 132 WNBA players. So how many are playing in the world? How many? How many playing in the WNBA? You will probably be, get struck down by lightning first before you, you know, there'll be a few that will make it. And I don't want to stop anybody's dreams. And you have to dream that way. Dream. If you want to become a basketball, a professional basketball player, dream that way. But you have to have a backup plan. All you have to do is go get your education. That's all you have to do every day is to get up and go get your education. 
what more? I mean, I, I wish it was that easy for me. How I ended up at the WNBA, I was working with USA Basketball. You guys have heard of USA Basketball, right? They've got all those junior programs. I ended up working with our Olympic team in 1996 that won the, the Olympic uh, gold medal. While at the Olympics, I get this call from the NBA, which I knew nothing about the NBA. Who knows the name of the commissioner of the NBA, of the NBA? What's his name? David Stern. David Stern, who has built a billion dollar business. It's a global business. I come to New York and he interviews me. In the end, I said to, to David, I said, David, how do you know me? How do you know me? I'm a college coach. This is what I do and I'm what I love. I've worked with the Olympic team. How do you know me? This is what he said to me. He said, I've had my people watching you, Renee, for the last year. I share that story with all the young people because whatever it is that you do, do, be, do it at the best of your ability and do it because you love it because you don't know who's watching. You have no idea who is watching. That was 13 years ago that David and, and came to me and I didn't even interview. They wanted to hire me. And, and I'm still blown away by the whole thing. Think about that. I have now been a part of four gold medals. 96, I helped coach the team. 2000, I was a member of the, of the committee that chooses the team. 2004, I chaired that committee that, cho uh, that uh, chose the team. 2008, I chaired that committee that chose the team. All gold medals. Is that not a blessing? What is it? It's all blessings. Team up. Study together. All those things help you. If you've got a freshman and you're a senior and you know something about algebra and I don't, help that freshman, help that sophomore, help each other. It all is a part of how you get together to win. You guys got that, ladies? Yes. I, I had an opportunity to um, send out an email to all of our players. I said, no, I take that back. It wasn't all of them. I sent it out to about 10 players. I said we have 132 players currently in the WNBA. About 110 of them are playing in 16 different countries around the world. So we've got our players everywhere. Quick history, we have 12 players currently in the WNBA. The WNBA tipped in 1997. The first player to sign a contract, anybody guess? Close, she was two, she was three. Someone says Cheryl Swoops, that's right. You know who the first person to make a basket in the WNBA? Penny Toller. You guys ever heard of her? She's a GM for the LA team. Do you know what two teams tipped? LA, that's good. And the New York Liberty. You should know when we tipped, you should know who signed the first contract, you should know what two teams uh, tipped. You should know all those things, who scored the first basket, and you should be able to just sound it off at any time that you want to sound it out. We're, we're, we just completed our what year? I already told you, 97. 11, okay, that's, that's 13. We just completed our 13th year. Our current um, president for the WNBA, her name is Donna Orinder. The founding president of the WNBA, her name is Val Ackerman. These are things that you guys should know. I also mentioned what's, what's, the, what's the amount of time you stay in the league? How many years? Four. Four and a half. Ladies, it goes by so fast, so fast. 95% of our players in the WNBA are college graduates. Academically, look at your GPA. It'd be so much fun for you guys to come together and say, you know what? Our team is averaging, a, I don't know, 85%, 3.5. Wouldn't that be something? I'd just like to end by saying I'm very, very happy to be here, and I wish each and every one of you so much success. You already are winners. You already are winners. Take this tournament, enjoy the tournament, and take advantage of the knowledge that is being given you. That's how you become empowered. Thank you very much.